inventory toolbar, full inventory UI, stackable items and slot selection. You will learn all of that in this tutorial. I've teamed up with Tamara to show you this inventory implementation in the building game. Be sure to visit her channel for the point and click building tutorial. On the right, you can see all chapters in this video. For the first three, I will rapidly build this UI with a great drag and drop system, bottom toolbar and full inventory pop-up on button press. If you'd like to skip directly to the coding part, please go to chapters 4 to 12 of this video. You will learn there how to spawn new objects in the inventory, how to use them, and we'll also spend a bit of time while implementing item stacking. At the very end, I will show you an integration of the system we'll be building with the real game built by Tamara. Let's start. Here is the empty Unity project. I will firstly create a new image, call it toolbar, resize it and move it to the bottom of the scene. To make sure it will always stay there, here in the anchor presets, select bottom center. Then let's create our first inventory slot. Create a new parent image, call it inventory slot and resize it. In my case, 55 by 55. Because both of our images are currently white, let's change their graphics to make them a bit more visible. You can download all graphics that I will be using in this video completely for free. Link in the description. Perfect. Now when the inventory slot is ready, let's create a prefab out of it. Next, we need to create a grid of those inventory slots. Click on the toolbar game object and add a new component called grid layout group. Change cell size, spacing and finally modify child alignment to middle center. Now, if we duplicate inventory slot a few times, you can see a nicely looking toolbar. To create a main inventory window, all we need to do is to duplicate the toolbar object, rename it to main inventory, move it to the center of the scene and change its anchors to middle center. Of course, having seven slots in the main inventory is not enough, so let's resize this box and add a few more inventory slots. Perfect. My only issue right now is that when this main inventory screen will be shown, players will be able to still interact with everything around this box in the game. In other games, what usually happens is that the whole background is being abstracted by the transparent black background. Let's do this. Create a new image and rename it to Dark Background. Now resize it to the full screen. Open Anchor Presets and click Double Stretch option while holding Alt or Option key. That way, we'll make sure that it will cover the whole screen no matter what the resolution is. Give it a black transparent color. Because this dark background should be behind everything you are related with created so far, let's move it to the top of the hierarchy. Lastly, we can group dark background and main inventory together. Just create an empty object, call it main inventory group, resize it to fill the entire screen the same way we did with the dark background and set both background and main inventory as children. Now everything will change visibility depending on enabling or disabling only one game object. Next, we need to add a button that will show us the main inventory. I will create a new image and call it shown main inventory button. Then resize it to the same size as our inventory slots and move it right here. Don't forget about setting bottom center anchors. Let's change its graphic to the one I've prepared before. Perfect. Now we need to create a button out of it. Click add component and add button. What we'd like to do is that when the player clicks, this main inventory UI will be enabled and the inventory button will be disabled. To do that, click this small plus icon in onclick event, drag in main inventory group and select game object that set active true. Similarly, let's add this button itself, but this time set active should be set as false. Let's hide main inventory on the scene and run the game. You can see that everything works as expected. 
To hide the main inventory, we'll do a very similar trick, but for the dark background object. Add a new component called button and create events to disable main inventory group and show up our inventory button. As you can see, now everything works as expected. Time to implement the last highly UI related thing, drag and drop system. In my latest drag and drop video, I showed you exact steps on how to do it. I will now quickly go through all of them once more. Firstly, I create a new object inside of an inventory slot called inventory item. I create a new script called the same. In this script, we implement three interfaces related to dragging and start or end of the drag. Then create logic using this simple line of code that when an object is dragged, it follows the mouse position. At the time of the dragging, we also need to disable image rake as target so that we'll be able to check if we have a slot to drop underneath. Remember to create a prefab out of it. Then to avoid weird layout issues, I've created the logic that on drag start, the object is placed on top of everything and only on drop its parent is reverted. Because on drop position does not revert to the center of the inventory slot, we need to add a new grid component to align the object inside of it. Remember to update inventory slot prefab after any changes. Time for dragging items between slots. On the inventory slot prefab, let's create a new script called the same. Inside of it, I will implement an iDrop handler interface. This method will check if any item is being dropped on the slot. If yes, let's check if this slot is not already occupied and change the parent of the dropped item. So this is our final UI for now. Button toolbar, main inventory on button press and the nicely working drag and drop system. We'll now proceed to build a data structure for our items. Currently, those graphics are only set in the UI and the game wouldn't know if this is a building block or a tool, is it stackable, etc. To do that, we'll create a new scriptable object. In assets, inside the script folder, let's create an item script. Because Tamara already created the exact same file, I'll copy its content to our project. Let's go through it. As a reminder, a scriptable object is defined by replacing mono behavior with the scriptable object interface. It is also very useful to add this create asset menu attribute, which you will see in action in just a second. Then here are variables. Tile will be used to show graphic on the map grid. We won't be using that for now. Image will be pretty important to us. It will be the sprite shown in the inventory and type, action type and range won't be used in the inventory itself, but are very important for the gameplay mechanics. They define if the item is a building block or a tool, if this tool digs or mines, and finally, in what range this tool can be used. I myself will add one more variable that will be very important for our inventory. Public bool stackable, which equals true by default. This variable will be used to determine if this item should be stacked in the inventory. Just like in Minecraft, some blocks can have multiple instances in one slot, while others require you to have a separate slot for each one of them. Now, when the item script is ready, we can create some items. In Assets, create Items folder and then right-click and select Add, Scriptable Object, Item. Let's create first item together. We will give it a digging block name, leave all gameplay related variables with defaults, then in the stackable please leave true to enable stacks in the inventory and finally assign the correct grass sprite. Here are configurations for all other items we'll be creating today. Now time for the scripting part. I'd like our inventory item to set its values based on the assigned scriptable object item. In inventory item script, let's create a field for that. Public item item and the method that will initialize our item. Public void initialize item with new item parameter. Inside, let's type image.sprite equals new item.image. 
Finally, for the testing purposes, I'll also create a start method that will initialize our item on the game start. Save, go back to Unity, and now on every item on the screen, assign a different item object. Now, after starting the game, you can see that each item automatically loads its sprite. Of course, we won't be assigning those scriptable objects manually, but we'll do that using other scripts. Because of that, in the inventory script, we'll hide the item field from the inspector using this handy property. From now on, this variable will be used to save information about which item is tied to this game object. Another change will be to remove the start method and then modify initialize item a bit. Now, this method will be an input point for our system to set up an item. So, what we need to do is to assign a new item to the item variable. It will come handy later on. Now, we can move on to create an inventory manager and control adding items to the inventory. I will create a new empty game object and call it inventory manager. Then, let's add a new script called the same and open it. Remove start and update and create a public method called add item. It will take an item parameter. Then we can also create a spawn new item method with item and inventory slot parameters. This first method will be called from the outside with the information what item should be added. Add item will search for any unoccupied slot in the inventory and when found, it will call the spawn new item method with information about which slot should be used and what kind of item spawned. To search for unoccupied slots, we firstly need to have an array that will gather all of them. At the beginning of the class, type public inventory slot and open and call square brackets to create array called inventory slots. When I will now save the script, you can see that we have a new field in Unity Inspector that should be filled with all inventory slots available in the UI. Because I want to firstly search for free slots in the toolbar, I will start from them. You can either drag each slot one by one, but what would be a better option, you can lock the Inventory Manager Inspector, select all remaining slots in the hierarchy and just drag them to the inventory slots array. Remember to unlock the inspector to avoid any confusion later on. Now, when we have all slots assigned, let's perform a search logic. In the add item script, let's create a for loop that will go over each element in the array. I will also create a temporary variable that will store the slot in question to make things a bit easier. And then do the check if, if, if what exactly? Our goal is to get information if this slot currently has any item inside of it. And you may remember that such an item always sits as a child of such a slot. So what we can do is to create a new temporary variable called item in slot that will be assigned to slot that get component in child type of inventory item. That way, we can now do the check if item in slot is equal to null, which means that there isn't any item in that inventory slot. If this slot is not occupied, that means we can spawn our new item here. Type spawn new item and pass in the item argument and slot variable that defines where we should spawn it. Finally, type return to stop executing this code any further. This video is brought to you by awesome CocoCode Patreon subscribers. If you'd like to support free game development education and get access to this and many other tutorial source files, check out the link below to join. Now let's quickly create a spawning logic so that we'll be able to test out everything in the game. In spawn new item method, type game object called new item game object equals instantiate, which if you don't know, that method creates a new game object on the scene with the passed in inventory item prefab and information what will be its parent, in our case inventory slot that transform. We're missing of course the prefab variable. Let's quickly define it at the top. Public game object inventory item prefab. 
and quickly assign it to the previously created prefab in Unity Inspector. Then we also need to get an inventory item script that sits on that newly created game object. Type inventory item called inventory item equals new item game object that get component type of inventory item. Having access to this method, we can now call inventory item dot initialize item and pass in the item that should be set up. A small reminder that this method just assigns item variable and sprite image based on the received input. Okay, that was a lot of coding and we are very close to spawning new items. But unfortunately, we still do not have any way to spawn those items on the scene. Finally, our game should send information to us saying, hey, add this item to the inventory. But until then, let's just create a demo script and a simple UI to simulate that. Here is a test group of three different buttons and an empty demo script. Let's open it and create two variables. Public inventory manager inventory manager that will hold a reference to the manager and public array of item called items to pick up. Then one simple method, public void pickup item with int id parameter and then inventory manager dot add item with argument items to pick up id. Save the script and in Unity Inspector assign inventory manager game object and a few items to pick up. Now for each of the three buttons add a new onclick event drag in this demo game object, select demo script pickup item, and finally type different IDs starting from zero to add different items. Guess what? We can now finally preview all of the logic we've created so far. Start your Unity game and click one of the buttons. As you can see, that immediately adds this item to the inventory and that works for multiple items as well. Also notice that when I'll move this first item to the back, any new item will fill out the empty space first. Of course, our main inventory works as well and spawns items if there is not enough space in the toolbar. Now, here is the issue. When I fill out the entire inventory and click the button, nothing happens. In our add item method, we just check if there is any slot free. There isn't, so we just do nothing. But imagine that in your game you collect something, but because inventory is full, it disappears and you can't do anything with the collected item. What we'll do in the script is that this method will return a true or false, and based on that, the game will know if the item has been successfully collected. To do that, replace void with bool, here type return true, which will mean that the item was added, and here at the very end of this method add return false, that will be triggered only if no free slot has been found. Now we can go to the demo script, and here let's add a variable that will hold information if the addition was successful. Type bool result equals. Then we'll use this variable to send message to the console. If result is equal to true, then debug.log item added, else any other message that will tell what's going on. Now you can see that while adding items, we get messages about successful additions, but when there is no space left, we get a message item not added. That logic will be especially helpful while integrating the game with the UI later on. Another thing you might have noticed is that currently items do not stack with each other. We'd like to build the same system as in Minecraft, where there can be multiple instances of the same item and only when the max count is reached, the second slot starts to be occupied. Let's do that. Firstly, we need to prepare our inventory item to hold information about the count. Here next to the item variable, type public int count equals one, that way by default each item will start with the one quantity. Then we also need to have a way to display such text. Let's add a text variable at the top called count text. We might assign value to it here in setup item, but I think it would be much better to create a separate method for that. 
type public void refresh count and inside type count text that text equals count that to string. Don't forget to call this refresh count in the initialize item method. In Unity, open inventory item prefab and add a new UI text to it. I will call it count, resize it to fill the bottom part of the item, change text to one, change alignment to right, and finally make this text bold. Then in the inventory item script, simply assign this newly created text. You can see that now when I start the game, each item has a number next to it. I think it would be a good idea to hide this text if count equals one, otherwise it looks a bit weird. To do that, we can go back to the inventory item script and here in the refresh count, simply type bool text active equals count greater than one. And then count text dot game object dot set active and pass in text active variable. Now the text is always hidden, but if I add a random count just for fun, you can see that everything works as expected. Now, actually, we only need one last thing to enable stacking. Here in the inventory manager, while adding item, we need to not only check empty slots, but also find slots with the same item and count lower than maximum. The best way to do that will be to just copy this bit of code, paste it above, change comment, and modify this if statement. We need to check three things. First, if there is any item in the slot, so item in the slot is not equal to null. Then if item in slot is the same one we are searching for, item in slot that item is equal to item. And third one, if count of items is lower than a set number, let's say four. If all of that will be true, that means we can change count of the existing item and update its UI. So type item in slot that count plus plus to increment it by one and item in slot that refresh count to update the number on the screen. And that's it. Just before going to Unity, I will create this new public variable called max stacked items and replace this hard coded value. Now when I save the script and go back to Unity, we can check our slots counting in action. Firstly, I create one item and then each new one is stacked together. I can only see this one issue that we forgot about checking if an item is stackable. That's why this pickaxe doesn't behave as intended. We can easily fix it by adding this check in the add item method. We are slowly getting to the end, but there are two more things we need to talk about. Selectable slots and using the items in our inventory. Let's tackle the first one. I want our slots in the toolbar to be selectable like in Minecraft. That way we'll know which item should be placed or used in the game. To give the player an idea which slot is selected, we'll just change its image color like in this example. Let's make it quick. In inventory slot, I'll add three variables. Public image image, you'll need using Unity Engine.ui for that. It will be a reference to the slot image. And two public color variables, selected color and not selected color. Then down here, let's add two public methods, select and deselect. As you might have guessed, in select, we'll change image color to selected color and in deselect, we'll change it to the not selected color. Also, in the awake method, I will run the deselect method. That way, we'll make sure that at the start of the game, all slots look like they are disabled. Great, now in inventory manager, let's create some logic to make this selection. At the top, I'll create a new variable called selected slot that will keep track of which slot is currently selected. By default, it will be assigned to minus one, which means that nothing is currently selected. Then let's create a new method called change selected slot that will take int new value as the parameter. 
As the name suggests, this new variable will tell us which slot will be the new one. So let's use it right away. Type inventory slots of id new value, that select, and then assign this selected slot variable we've created above to the new value. But if a player changes their slot to any other one, we should firstly disable the old one. At the beginning of this method, type inventory slots with id of selected slot that deselect. And because this minus one value does not exist in array, let's also check for that by typing if selected slot is greater or equal to zero. In Unity, to test it out, go to inventory slot prefab and assign its image and both colors. Please remember to set up the alpha value as well. That way, at the start of the game, all slots will automatically get the not selected color thanks to the awake method we've created earlier. If we'd like to select first slot automatically at the start of the game, here in the inventory manager, let's create a start method and type change selected slot with the parameter of zero. Perfect. Now at the start of the game, we have the first slot selected and the player can immediately see what's going on. Let's quickly give him or her ability to change this selected slot. There are multiple ways you can implement it. I will just use one to seven number keys on the keyboard to change selection. In the inventory manager script, let's create an update method. Here we can do it two ways. The easiest one would be to create if or switch statement that will check if input that get key down with the key code of alphanumeric one to seven, then change selected slot zero to six. That works, but this solution is not really elegant and looks a bit messy. An alternative way would be to code it like this. With this line, we check if any key is pressed, then check if the pressed key is a number, and finally, only if the number is between our range, we'll call the change selected slot method. Please go with the solution that you are more comfortable with. Time for the last coding challenge, using items. This one should be pretty straightforward. Some other script will ask inventory manager what item is in the currently selected slot. Our job is to return it properly and remove it from the inventory if needed. In inventory manager, create a new method called get selected item that will return item type. Then let's create a temporary variable that will tell us which is the currently selected slot. Just like in the add item method, I'd like to also get information if this slot has an item inside of it and perform a check based on that. So let's copy and paste this bit of code. If item in slot is not null, then let's return item in slot that item. Otherwise, return null. Just as I did with adding items, I will create a new test button on the scene called get selected item and create a new method in the demo script with the same name. To test out this functionality, I need to type item received item equals inventory manager that get selected item. And then just to check what we received, I will also type debug information. After assigning the button to the correct script and launching the game, you can see that when there is no item in the slot, we get no item received message. But when we add something and click this button again, we get info about the selected item. Perfect. Of course, there is still one last thing missing, because when in the game you place an item or use it, it should disappear from your inventory. We can do that pretty easily. Here in the inventory manager, in the get selected item method, let's add a parameter bool use. If that value is true, it will mean that we should get rid of this item or at least decrease its count. Let's replace this return with assignment to new variable and then create an if statement that checks if use is equal to true. If yes, then let's decrease our item count by one. Type item in slot that count minus minus. If that will mean that the item in slot that count is lower or equal to zero, then we need to destroy inventory item game object. So destroy 
and passing item in slot that game object. If that is not true and this item still has some remaining uses, let's just simply use our refresh count method to update its UI. And that's it. I will only add a new test button called use selected item with the difference that this time true parameter will be passed that tells the inventory manager to use this item. Now, grand the finale, let's test out everything we've built today. Start the game, add some items, notice how they are beautifully stacked. We can then open our backpack, drag items there, spawn new items to fill out the empty space in the toolbar, then change selected slot, get info about what item is in the selected slot, and finally, use this item and either decrease its count or remove it completely. Perfect! Time for the very last part. I want to show you this great project that Tamara created on her channel, where you can experience a Terraria-like building system. It allows you to place different kinds of blocks, break them and even collect droppable items. Please go and watch her tutorial if you'd like to learn how to create all of that from scratch. But there is something missing here. Oh, much better. As you can see, I've imported all the UI scripts we've created today, but no demo buttons. They won't be needed anymore because we'll integrate that functionality into the game. Here is a checklist of all the things we need to modify in our scripts to make everything work. Let's start. Before we'll be able to break anything, we need to get some tools. In our game, we'll get a pickaxe and shovel at the start of the gameplay. To do that in the inventory manager script, I'll add a new public variable called start items. It will be an item array. Then in the start method, we can create a loop. For each item in start items, simply add item. Now in Unity in the inventory manager, we just need to assign which items are generated at the start. Here it is. But as you can see, the game still doesn't know which item is selected. So let's move on. Because a few different scripts will be using methods from inventory manager, we need to make an instance of it that will be accessible from all scripts. In inventory manager at the very top, type public static inventory manager called instance. And then in the awake method type instance equals this. Perfect, that way we can now proceed with the first step. In the building system script from Tamara, here is an update method that checks all the time what is currently selected item. For now, this item is hard coded, so let's remove this variable. And in the update method, let's type item of a type item equals inventory manager that instance that get selected item and passing false. As a reminder, false here means that this item won't be removed in the inventory just yet. And now when I run the game, let's take our pickaxe and break the stone. Perfect. The next step, collecting items. Notice that when I move the character, dropped items are collected but do not show up in the inventory. That's an easy fix. In loot script that is tied to all dropped items on the scene, we need to perform some modifications with the collecting items. Here, just before starting the coroutine, type inventory manager that instance that add item and pass in item variable. You might remember that this method actually returns true or false depending if there is free space in the inventory. If there isn't, we shouldn't be able to collect it. To perform this logic, add bool can add equals before the add item call, and then add if statement that will start the coroutine only if can add is true. Works perfectly, stacks all collected items in the inventory. The very, very last step to do is to enable building blocks. Actually, you can already build them, but building does not decrease their number. In the building system script where we've been before, scroll a bit down to the build method. All we need to do here is to remove the selected item while placing the block. Type inventory manager, 
that instance that get selected item with true to remove it from the UI. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen, we can now break stuff, build it, break once again, and if we'd like to, we can also manage a full inventory that goes with it. Thank you so much for staying around till the end. Check out Tamara video, my other tutorials and join amazing patrons that support this channel. See you soon.